Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most important features in all of Flare, and that is structure bars, which are used in the XML editor whenever you're editing content files. So let's go in and check out structure bars. So when you open up a content file, a topic, a snippet, a template page, you're going to be in the XML editor. And by default, you're going to see these bars over here on the left, and sometimes you'll see them across the top also, depending on the situation. These are structure bars, and they're really, really cool, really useful. What they do is they're sort of a halfway point between this stuff, your regular content that you're looking at, and this view, the text editor, which is behind the scenes, all the markup, all the tags. So if you, you know, you're not, you're not comfortable with the text editor, but you wanna know more of what's going on in the file, you wanna have structure bars on. And so really what these are doing is, is showing you the structure. Now that's why they're called structure bars. They're showing you the structure of the file because of these files are made up of a bunch of tags. All right, so on the left, these are called tag bars. All right, so, they have to do with the block uh, block elements. So uh, a heading is a block element. A paragraph is a block element. A list is a block element, all right, and so on. Now, when you click in an area uh, of, the, uh, of the file, you're going to see a tag bar that is associated with that content highlighted over here on the left. So, some of these are really easy to just understand right away. You click in this one and you look over and that tag bar says H1. All right, it's using an H1 style, which you can see up here in the home ribbon. Okay, that makes sense. First heading level. Click down here in the paragraph, look over to the left, P. All right, makes sense, paragraph. Then you get down here to the list. All right, and this is a case where there's something going on here that requires multiple tags. And uh, first of all, it's highlighting a P, so paragraph tag. But then that paragraph tag actually it occurs within another tag. It occurs within this LI tag, which stands for list item. And then all the list items, all those paragraph tags, are within an OL tag. And an OL in CSS is for an ordered list or numbered, uh, a numbered list. If I had a bulleted list in here, this would say UL, it's an unordered list. All right, and so the, you, you get all kinds of tag bars with all kinds of labels, depending on what kind of content you're putting in here. These are just, a few examples. And this list here, you see uh, OL, LI, and then P tags. Well, they don't have to have P tags in them, paragraph tags. You could actually remove that so that it's just an OL, LI. Uh, it's just sort of uh, your choice, what you want to do. Now, all of these main um, content tags, H1, P, OL, and all this other stuff, those are wrapped, those are within another tag. You go in another level and there's a body, all right? So the body tag wraps around all these other things. That is where your the guts of your, your content file are. And then even outside of that is an HTML tag. So that is just the, the basic structure of these. And if you were to look in the text editor, you would see the same thing. There's your outside HTML tag. There's your body tag. And the HTML tag has also, there are some meta tags in it, which you're not seeing necessarily in the, the um, editor, but they're there. And then you got your body tag and there's your H1 and your paragraph and your OL and LI, all that stuff. So the structure bar is just breaking this down, making it easier to see and digest. So it's really cool. Now, tag bars over on the left, those are for the block level. But what about if you have a character level? Like down here under step two, I've got this paragraph under it, which is uh, just some extra text under this step. 
And one of these, if I click anywhere in, in that paragraph, in that line of text, all of a sudden you see these tag bars or these um, span bars. These are called span bars if they're across the top. So these are character level. They're not taking up all the space. They're not block bars, they're span bars. They're within a block, uh, within a block of content. And I've got two things going on here. And if you can read this, the first one says span, the second one says strong, because those are the kinds of uh, things that are applied in here. If I click in this green bold uh, content, that comment word comment, it highlights span. That is the bar that goes with this. It's a span tag, all right? And uh, if I click on it, you can see exactly what it is. It's this green bold thing that I've applied here that gives it its look and feel. Now, if I click in the other one, that says strong. So strong is just one of the basic um, cascading style sheet styles, strong, all right? That's a basic tag that's used in HTML. So it's used there, but green and bold was this sort of custom style that I created and it is character level. And so it's considered a span, right? And if you hover over it, you can see span and the class is green, bold. So hover over those to see uh, the text a little bit better or, um, or to see more information about it. All right, now you don't have to have these bars on at all. You can turn them off if you want. And um, that is these little buttons down here at the bottom. This one turns off the tag bars to the left and this one turns off the span bars. And so you can just work like this if, if you want to. I would recommend that you keep uh, the structure bars on because you're gonna find that they are really, really helpful. Not only do they show you the structure, but they show you, uh, they, they allow you to do certain things quickly um, that uh, it's just faster than doing them using other parts of the UI a lot of times. So what are some of the things that you can do? Well, you can move content around simply by clicking and dragging. If I scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see, all right, I've got my heading, a couple of paragraphs, a list there. There's an image in there and the image has its own tag, IMG, and it's wrapped inside of a P tag. And then you come down here, tables have their own structure bars table, and then there's all these other um, bars, all these other tags within it, okay? And then also you get these bars across the top for tables. So some something kind of unique going on here. And when you click inside of a cell in a table, you're going to see extra uh, tags that just tag bars that just show up. For example, in this one, I clicked in column two. So it's showing me all right, within here, there's a table, and then there's a T head, and then there's a TR, which is a row, and then there's a TH, that's a heading. If I click in this cell below it, regular uh, cell of the table, I, within table, then there's T body, that's the main body, all right? And then within that, there's a TR, that's a, another row, and then there's TD, okay? So that is a tag that's used for the regular content. And then even within that, there's a paragraph tag. So there's a whole bunch of things going on here. And I can click and drag things. Uh, let me just type a little bit of different text in here so you can see that I actually am moving this thing because right now they all have really the same word in them. But I could click this and I could drag it up and you see the arrow and release it. So you can move things around, which is really, really useful. Or I could take uh, this P tag, which contains the IMG, the image tag, and I could click and drag this up. There's that arrow, drop it. And now it's above my list. So you can manipulate it like that. You can move things around. Not only can you move things around, uh, but you can, you can also select things and you can use a right click on these bars to perform certain actions. So if I wanted to, let's say, select the entire list, I could just come over here to the outer tag bar, which is OL, just left click it, and it, is, and it selects everything. Or I could um, come in here and I could select just that LI and it selects that, right? Everything that, that's within it. So I can do that. And then depending on 
the type of bar it is, the type of content it is, you right click on these and the menu will give you a lot of options in here. And I use this stuff a lot. So uh, some of the things I use um, is uh, I'll, I'll cut and copy things. I will paste before and after. Unbinding, unbinding just means you're removing the tag. So for example, you got a list here. And if I right click on that and I select unbind, it's no longer a list. It's just a bunch of paragraphs in here. I'm gonna undo that. So unbind is, is something that you can do. And, and what I get uh, right clicking on a paragraph tag is gonna be different than what I, I see when I right click on an OL tag. Uh, because it's given me all this stuff, extra stuff for lists in here. And that's going to be different from what I see when I right click on a table tag. I'm going to get table stuff in here. Uh, but some of these things are, are just kind of universal. The cut, copy, paste before, paste after, unbind, delete. Uh, you can move things using this method. Conditions. This is another great way to get to conditions. If you're doing that, creating snippets and micro content. This is a great way. To, cre to create those things. And then I like to use also style class because sometimes I will want to make an edit to the style sheet and it's just an easy way for me to get there. So I will, for example, right click on this H1 and I'll select style class and edit style class. And it opens up my style sheet and it automatically selects that style. So now I can go in and I can make changes to it. So that's really, really cool, useful thing. Um, let's go down here to lists, right click on that. So right now this is a numbered list, okay? Uh, let's say I wanted to make it a bulleted list. I could right click and I could go list type and make it a bulleted list instead. I'm gonna undo that. And of course there are other things I could um, other things having to do with lists in here. I can sort my list and, and all kinds of things. Uh, remember I mentioned that uh, sometimes be, by default, you'll have an LI and then a paragraph tag within it. And what that allows you to do is just press enter and then backspace. And now I can add text between those list items without interrupting the numbering. But sometimes people like to not have the paragraph uh, paragraph tags in there. We well, could remove them manually, right clicking on that and say, make it a simple item. Now the paragraph tag is gone. You can also control this in, uh, in the options dialog here, uh, the default setting, whether you want new lists to have paragraph tags or not. So um, let's go down to here, the table, right click on this table properties. I'll use this a lot uh, to get into the properties. Uh, I will also maybe use table style to maybe change this, the table style sheet associated with this. So there's all kinds of things that you can do in here. Uh, I did mention before that you just kind of look to the left and you see, or depending, you know, if it's a uh, span bar, you look up at the top and you see the text on these. And sometimes it's easy to read and, and tell what's going on, but sometimes depending on what the tag is, you, you can't really see everything. For example, I'm gonna right click this one and turn this into a snippet. And I'm just gonna keep those settings and select this. And you look over here, now it's no longer a P tag, it is something else because this is a snippet, but there's too much to tell about it. So you can't really get it all in this little space. And that's why you hover over it. And you see, oh, that's a snippet block. And that's what it's called, that's where it is. You get all that from just hovering over it. Or I might wanna turn this one into a piece of micro content. Right click that, select create micro content. And I'm just gonna put the word paragraph. If you wanna learn more about micro content, check out the video series on micro content. All right, and it actually opened up that editor because I created that new piece in there and see something else happened here. I get another structure bar there and within it, it kept this uh, paragraph because here in the snippet, it basically took all of that content and put it into another file. Well, in the case of micro content, the content's still there, but something happened. It marked it as a piece of micro content. So I still have my paragraph tag, but it's wrapped inside this other thing. And if I hover over it, I can see, oh, that's a piece of micro content. And it has a particular ID associated with it to uh, differentiate it from other micro content that I might have 
uh, in the same file. So there's a lot going on here with, uh, with structure bars, tag bars and span bars. I find them extremely, extremely useful. I would not want to continue editing without them because it just makes things easier and better. So that's going to do it for structure bars. Hopefully you see uh, fr just from that little demonstration, uh, all the different things that you can do and more, more that I haven't even covered. But uh, if you're still getting used to them, get, get in there, get in with a, with a sample project even, and just play with it, play with it, see all the things that you can do. Before long, you're going to identify certain things that you just like using the, the structure bars for, and you're going, going to gain knowledge in how um, these topic files, these snippet files, these uh, template pages, how they're structured, how they're put together, what all the pieces mean. Thank you for watching this video. We'll talk to you next time.